Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I think it's about time that I release some videos on VoIP. We've done a lot of networking. We've done a lot of Wi-Fi security cameras, but we haven't gone too in depth with VoIP. So this will be a full video series featuring the Grandstream 6300 series. In this first video, I'll show you the Grandstream 6301. That's the PBX that I have. There are a bunch of different models and we'll take a look at that as well. We'll get the basic setup configured. We'll create a new voice VLAN as we shouldn't have our voice traffic going over the same network as our data traffic. In the second part of this, we'll set up a VoIP zip trunk as well as some extensions for our phones. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at mactelecomnetworks. And we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. So let's take a closer look at the UCM 6301. And this is the Grandstream 6301. On the front, we could see it's labeled with Grandstream. And then we have our LCD panel. When it's plugged in, it will give us information, the MAC address, the IP address, and so on. On the top, we have our interface status. And then we have our information button. Under that, we have our settings, back and then home. And this right here is our navigation where we could scroll up and down by the touchpad. On the back of the 6301, we have a reset button. And then we have our DC 12 volt power input. Beside that, we have our WAN port. And then we have a LAN port and a heartbeat port. We have one FXS port and then one FXO port, as well as an attachment for our ground. On the front, we have an SD card and a USB input so we could expand our storage for our voicemail. I really like the new look of these IP PBX. They look a lot more modern. This was their old style of PBX, and this was the 6202. Now that we've seen the physical UCM 6301, let's take a look at some of the differences between the models. On the UCM 6301, we have one FXO port and one FXS port. On the 6302, we have two of each. On the 6304, we have four of each. And on the 6308, we have eight FXS and FXO ports. If we look a little bit lower down, we could see the maximum call capacity. So on the 6301, we could have up to 500 users and up to 75 concurrent voice calls. On the 6302, we could have 1,000 users and up to 150 concurrent calls. On the 6304, we could have 2,000 users with up to 300 calls. In the 6308, we could have 3,000 users with 450 concurrent calls. And all the models support the same call features. So we have call park, call forward, call transfer, call wait, caller ID, call record, call history, ringtone, IVR, music on hold, call routes, DID, DOD, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different features. And we'll be going over that in this video series. Now we've seen some of the features between the different models. We need to create our voice VLAN. I'm going to be using my UDM Pro as my firewall, but you could create the VLAN on your PF Sense or Untangled Box or whatever firewall you are using. Now we're over at my UDM Pro, we need to create that voice VLAN. So we'll click on the settings wheel and then go to networks. From the networks tab, we're going to create new network and I'm going to call this Grandstream. I'm going to have it corporate and then we need to give it a VLAN ID. So I'll give it a VLAN ID of 140. And then we need to do the gateway IP subnet. So it'll be 192.168.140.1 slash 24 and we'll update the DHCP range. We'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll press save. Now we have the voice VLAN created. We need to physically plug in my UCM 6301. Since we'll be physically uplinking this to another Ubiquiti switch, we'll be having the Grandstream 6301 in switch mode. We'll need to plug in an ethernet cable from my Ubiquiti switch to the WAN port on the Grandstream system. I'm going to get it plugged in and powered up, and then we'll put the Grandstream 6301 into the voice VLAN. The UCM 6301 is now powered up, and I have that Ethernet cable plugging into the WAN port. I know that it's plugged into my 10 gig office switch on port 5, but we could see it's in the network of LAN, which we don't want it to be in that. We need to change it to our Grandstream voice VLAN. So I'll click on the switch, and we'll go down to port 5. I'll hit the edit pencil and under switch port profile, we're going to switch that to our Grandstream network. So we can see it says Grandstream and then in brackets 140. So that will be VLAN 140 and we'll press apply. Now the Grandstream 6301 is in the correct network. We can see it's been given an IP address of 192.168.140.232. 
So let's browse to that IP. All right, now we're at the welcome page of the 6301. We need to put in our username and password. The default username is admin and the password is on the back of the 6301. So I'm gonna put that in and then we'll press log in. After putting in our password in, we get this prompt. Wave is a soft phone app for the UCM that offers calling and conferencing and instant messaging. Number one, use your UCM account credentials or QR code to log into Wave. Use the Wave app and stay connected to your business communications. And number three, instant messaging, point to point audio and video calls and multi-party conference. You could click learn more, but we're not gonna do that in this video. We'll do another full video on the Wave app. And then it tells us emergency calling has not been configured. Click here to configure it now. We're not gonna configure it yet, but we will end up doing that as it's very important. So this is our setup wizard. The first thing we'll wanna do is change our password. So we're gonna enter the current password and then we'll put in a new password and I'll put in my email address. Now the second step is our network setting. So our method will be switch and then we have an MTU size of 1492. The preferred DNS server I'll put for now is just 1.1.1.1. And then under our LAN, we have the IP method. Currently, it's just getting an IP address from DHCP, but I'm going to want to make that static. So I'm going to click on static, and then we'll put an IP out of our static range. So if we go back to my UDM Pro, and we look at our DHCP range, we could see that the DHCP range starts at 192.168.140.6. So we could put the grand stream on 192.168. 140.5. So we'll select static and then the IP address will be 192.168.140.5. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 and then the gateway will be 192.168.140.1. The DNS server again we'll put as 1.1.1.1 and the second one we'll just use quad 9, 9.9.9.9. After all that information's in, we'll press next. And now we need to select our time zone and I'm near Toronto, so I'll type in Toronto and it's UTC minus five. You could change the date format if you'd like, but I'm gonna leave it at default and press next. Step four is extension. So this will start an extension at 1000, but we could change that if we like, and it will automatically create five extensions for us. I'll leave it at this default and we'll press next. Step five is if we wanna add a trunk or some routes, we're not going to do that in this video, but in the next video, we'll take a look at that and we'll press next. Step six is just a summary of everything we've done and we will press save. And it says some of the configured changes require the system to reboot. Do you want to reboot the device now? And we do. We're going to have to point it at that new IP address of 192.168.140.5 to access the web interface. I'll press OK and it will reboot. The reboot has now completed and we can see that I'm pointing to 192.168.140.5. At the top, we could see security level of current username or password is too low. Click here to change them, and that's what we're going to do. At the top, we need to enter our current password, and if we'd like to change that, we could change that here. And then we could change our username, which I'm going to want to do. Is right now, it's set to admin, so I'll create a username, and then we'll save the changes. Now it boots us out, we need to sign in with the new username and our password. And that's the initial setup of the UCM 6301. This is the dashboard and we could see we have our space usage. So we could see configuration partition and data partition. We could see our resource usage. We could see our external storage devices, which I currently have nothing plugged in. And then we could see some PBX status. So we could see active calls, remote connect sessions, temporary meetings, video meeting, audio meeting, and then extensions, call queues, and so on. Under the interface status, we could see USB, SD, LAN, Heartbeat, FXS, and FXO. And then on the right-hand side, we could see our trunks. This could either be analog or a VoIP SIP trunk. We don't have any currently configured yet, but once we do, it will show up in this trunk list. On the left-hand pane, there's a ton of different drop-down menus and things that we could do. Under system status, we could look at our dashboard, system information, active calls, and network status. Under extension and trunks, we could create extensions, extension groups, analog trunks, VoIP trunks, SLA station, outbound routes, and inbound routes. And then we have this long list of call features, which we'll take a look at in another video. So that's it for this video. This was just the basic configuration to get the UCM 6301 up and running. In the next video, we'll take a look at our extensions and get a VoIP SIP trunk configured. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.